Music at, here at Oval Talk. Many of you know me, but we very much appreciate you being here tonight. And uh, you're in for a treat. What you or I guess you say who you're about to hear or whom you're about to hear are some of our best students in the performing arts. We have a violinist, we have a pianist, and we have two vocalists. And I think you will agree after hearing them, they are well worth coming out one more time on a Friday night to hear. Uh, many of you do not know our music <coughs> faculty, primarily because many of them are not here, except for a few hours over a few days each week. Now, I would like to take a moment to introduce them to you, and also indicate some that could not be here tonight and why. First, uh, back on the back left corner is, uh, is uh, adjunct professor, Mr. David Bice. David, if you would sing a little bit. David is accompanist for our vocalist tonight and is also our university harpsichordist in residence as well. Uh, up on my right is uh, adjunct professor, Dr. Brent Runnels. Yeah. Dr. Reynolds teaches music and culture and music theory and is our affiliate artist in piano. He is also a Steinway artist as well. And did Mr. Scanlon come in? He was on his way. He may have gotten delayed. Paul, did you hear? Uh, I direct Professor Paul Scanlon, whom if you went to the convocation this afternoon, you have heard his good work with our overall winds is our director of bands. He conducts both the Oglethorpe Concert Wims and the, uh, the Pep Band for us. We also have several other affiliate artists, most of whom could not be here tonight because they're all performing somewhere tonight. Uh, Mr. David Arts is the principal second violinist to the Atlanta Symphony, and of course, they're playing tonight, so he has to be there. Um, but uh, he uh, is uh, the teacher of Everett Jackson, who you will hear in just a few moments. Uh, Mr. Richard Burgess is our affiliate artist in guitar, and Dr. Aaron Ellis is our affiliate artist in cello, and Patty Gubas is our affiliate artist in viola. And so sometimes students are surprised that we have this many people teaching these areas on campus, but we do. It's just we all crawl into little holes and work ourselves silly, and then never see the light of day like little moles in the library. So we come out, we squint, and you know, oh yes, it is daylight again. <laughs> So we don't intentionally hide from you, I assure you of that. It's just that uh, we all have such busy schedules, we're moving very rapidly, close to the speed of light, it feels at times. It's hard to see. I want to take a moment and introduce the performers you're going to hear tonight, and then I'm not going to say any more until the end of the program. However, one thing I do want to say is for the first time this year, we have rather nice prizes to give to the first and second place winners tonight. We've never had this at our Liberal Arts Symposium before, but thanks to the vendors of our university library, if you flip to the reverse of your program, you will see that the first prize is given by EBSCO, which is a Nook, and second prize is given by Elsevier, and that's an iPad Shuffle. And these are vendors who provide books to the library. And so what will happen is, after all the perform, I'm going to ask you just to sit quietly while the judges go and deliberate and uh, come back and announce the winner and give them their gifts tonight before we go. So if you would just be a little patient in that regard. <coughs> First tonight is Everett Jackson. Everett is a violinist and a student of David Arntz, as I mentioned before. He's a sophomore biology major from Marietta, Georgia. And tonight, as you see on the program, he's accompanied by our affiliate artist and adjunct professor, Dr. Brent Ronald. Following that, Lissa Beck, vocalist. She is a student of Professor Marianne Hill. Lisa is a junior communications major from Fayetteville, Georgia, and she will be accompanied by Professor David Weiss. Following her, Naomi Carroll is also a vocalist. She, too, is a student of Professor Hill. She's a junior studio art major from Indy Atlantic, Florida, and she, too, will be accompanied by Mr. Weiss. And then finally, Hilla Jenkins, who is a student of Dr. Brent Reynolds, is a pianist. She is a junior mathematics major from Charleston, South Carolina. So would you welcome our first performer tonight, Deborah Jackson. Hello, I'm Everett Jackson, and my company today is Dr. Brian Reynolds. Uh, a little bit about the background of the piece. 
It was written by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. It's titled Concerto uh, Number no. Five in A Major. Written year 1775, so just before our country uh, was founded. And a little bit about the time period. The period 1750 to 1827 is the classical period. And this is important because two buzzwords for the classical period are balance and contrast. If you look at our Capitol building, for example, it's neoclassical, you can see the balance with uh, the House of Representatives on the left or Senate on the right, and the contrast being the rotunda in the middle. The piece actually takes that form itself as it has the exposition, development, and then the recapitulation. Uh, but this piece is interesting for Mozart because before he goes into the Allegro, he actually has an adagio, which is similar to his arias, and you may or may not know, but Mozart lived off of his arias. He was in Vienna at the time, which also brings in an aspect of the third movement and also the nickname of the piece. It's sometimes called the Turkish because there uh, exists in the third movement Ala Turka, which means in the style of the Turkish band. At this point, uh, Austria and the Ottoman Empire had been fighting for over 200 years, uh, and it was actually in vogue at the time to style your pieces in the, the military marches of the Ottoman Empire, and Mozart wanted to be a part of that. So this is Concerto No. 5 in A Major by Wolfgang.
she would pluck me and hold, her against, hold me against her chest. But alas, she doesn't do that. She ends up stepping on him, and he still loves her for it. He says, oh, it's okay. It's you.
at the Music Symposium tonight. My name is Naomi Carroll. I'm a junior here at Oglethorpe University, and I'm a studio art major. I have two solo selections to sing for you tonight, the first of which is titled Do Not Go, My Love by Richard Hageman. Hageman was originally from Netherlands. He eventually emigrated to the United States, and he was a very famous conductor in many different um, operas across the U.S., including the Civic Opera in Chicago and the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. Uh, this piece is a tragic and very, very tragic art song that he wrote. It is um, about a woman who is sitting beside her loved one on their deathbed, and she is pleading with them to not die while she is not awake or right there by their side. Do not go my life.
she sings right over him with her tra la And I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you. 
band Beethoven. And a little background on the piece. The piece is German for poor Elise, and scholars are not sure who Elise is. They believe that the person who interpreted the piece originally interpreted it wrong, and it was actually for Therese, or for Therese, Therese being Beethoven's student, who he proposed to, and she turned it down. And so this piece was originally made for her, and it's a love story towards her. And the second piece I'm paying, playing is Godwalk's Cakewalk by W.C. And he wrote this piece for his daughter in one of the suites that he wrote called Children's Corner Suite. And for those who do not know what Godwalk is, the Godwalk is a doll, and the body is fully black with red hair, and it's supposed to resemble the black minstrels of the time that were very popular. And the Cakewalk is a dance that was very popular at the time that people performed, and whoever performed it best won a cake. And another interesting fact about the piece is that W.C. pokes fun at Wagner, who's pregnant, he's not such a fan of, and he pokes fun at that. So, that's.
Yes, it does. All of them. Now, if you will give us just a few moments to deliberate, we will be back with tonight's prizes and a couple of closing words. So, choose a topic. Talk among yourselves. <laughs> Well, we liked everything we heard, um, and I'm supposed to say it was very tough, very difficult to decide. I'm supposed to say that. Uh, also, I will say it honestly, it was <laughs> difficult to decide. It would have been back much sooner if it hadn't been difficult. Uh, but we have decided that the second prize, second place winner for tonight in terms of, of performance and quality goes to Kevin Jenkins. So if you would come and get this And we had, uh, I don't bowl, but I have heard when you are bowling that they sometimes refer to this as a Cadillac split, where you have a pin on one side of the lane and a pin on the other, and it's almost impossible to get them both at the same time. Well, that's exactly what we ran into, a Cadillac split. So we have decided to divide the first prize between Naomi Carroll and Elizabeth. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Enjoy your night.